where are we? What are we doing? We have this theorem. Fn goes to f pointwise. Um, Fn is differentiable with f prime of n going uniformly to g. Then f prime is going to equal to g. And so the basic setup is the standard derivative way of proving that, that a derivative exists is just by taking this, you know, the quotient minus whatever you think the limit is. In this case, we think f prime is equal to g, showing it's less than less than epsilon. Uh, and we're going to do this by using triangular inequality split into three parts. And um, we we've already shown in previous screencasts that this first chunk is less than or equal to epsilon over three. And we can do that as long as capital N is bigger than or equal to some n one that we got from there. Now. Notice f prime of n goes uniformly to g. I, I should have said this at the time. That was actually very important in getting the screen epsilon over 3 because we had to show that uh, there exists uh, an n1 that works for every single alpha uh, because alpha depends on the m and the n that we chose. So that's where that came in. So now we're going to prove, hopefully we're going to finish it up, but we're going to start with the purple part. So here's a lemma. Um, uh, we're going to prove that f n prime little n minus g of c sorry that should be a c is less than epsilon over 3 for all n bigger than or equal to some n2 uh, and n2 is to be named later and what we're doing here is we're going to prove this purple part right here. So we're proving the purple part of the lemma right now. And here's a proof. Well, the proof is um, since f prime of n goes to g, uh, at this point, I don't care if it's point wise or, or, or not, because I only care about what happens at one point c. Uh, there exists an n2 such that. Uh, fn of c minus g of c is less than epsilon over 3 for all n bigger than or equal to n2. Now, I will note a couple things. First of all, uh, this c is the exact same c that I fixed up here. This epsilon is the exact same epsilon that we picked up there. So I'm using a lot of notation uh, from before. Uh, so again, these lemmas are recycling the, the, the knowledge from the proof. So, so that's basically it. So what do we have? By this purple part, we know that uh, we get an n2 such that we need n in order for this, this part to be true. n has to be bigger than or equal to n2. So here's what we do. Uh, I'll do this in pink since that since that's what we need. This pink part is we just let n equal to the max of n1 and n2. So n is just going to be a particular number. So what we're do doing is we're just plugging out one one of these, whichever capital N works, and then we're just plugging it in. We're not taking limits or anything like that. Here it's just a particular function. Uh, and so this part's taken care of, the green part's taken care of, and now I get that this thing is less than epsilon over three by this lemma down, down below. So that takes care of two of the parts. We now actually know what f of capital N is too. So the last thing to do is given that f of capital N, I need to show that this thing is less than epsilon over three, in which case I'll have this thing is less than or equal to epsilon over three, plus something that's less than epsilon over 3, plus something that's less, less than epsilon over 3. Uh, this one's less than or equal to, but these are strictly less than, so we're going to be fine, add up to epsilon. That's going to be the last screencast, so I'm going to take care of this blue guy. So we'll stop here.